love our theme song. Oh my God, I love our theme song too. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to If These Walls Could Talk. I'm Wendy Stewart. And I'm Tim Mott. Oh, we're so happy to be here with you. Yeah. Look, too. It's like a leftover from the eclipse. Look there. I have the sun coming up. Oh, behind right, me. right behind you over there. That's a very, very good sign. Absolutely. The sun is right. Oh, look, you have the sun on your I side, do. too. Oh, all this light is in the room. And we it just eclipsed. Oh, there, there, there. <laughs> You're in the middle of an eclipse. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're yes. so silly, but you know what? That's what it's about. This We're is Wendy Stewart. Yes, all day long. Tonight. And I'm Tim Moss. But oh, I, I didn't we know did, if we, we did. did. Okay. We did. <laughs> because we're it's silly. one of those days. It is one of those days. I often feel these days, Tim. It's always one of those days, these yeah. days, right? It's so it it's so crazy. So how, how was your week? Oh my gosh. Well, I <laughs> As, don't even get me started. Chris Tanner's art opening oh, right. at La Mama Gallery was I, I mean, first of all, Chris Tanner is a shining light. Um, he was bejeweled. Everything on the walls was bejeweled, including the driftwood that he collected yeah. and encrusted in precious stones. He had panels of gorgeous brilliance and gemstones. And of course, I don't have to tell you it was Chris Tanner. Everyone, you can't help but love him and you can't help but being uplifted mm -hmm. when you're you know, in the room with him. So, you know, the beauty of being here in New York, we get to go to a lot of cool I know, stuff, you I know? know. And then I went to, I went to see Mindy Franken's show right here at, at, um, at, and I miss at Mindy. Pangea. She was amazing, right? Yeah. Princess. Wow. It was really fun. Yeah. And, and he, I sat with Richard Skipper and got to oh, spend you did. an evening with oh, him. The, the, we had a great the time. crew, right. And <laughs> Richard Skipper, uh, went to Palm Springs to do his show. He's yeah. And, um, it's I forget where he's going next. Where is he going next? Michigan, maybe? Or L.A. I know LA. he's at L.A. And, L.A. and Palm Springs and... Right. Santa Monica. He's yeah, going Santa to Santa Monica, Monica now. Oh, my yeah. God. I Do I have she anything knows, else to do but to memorize other people's every, schedules? Right. Everybody, where everybody's appearing I, and what like, time. Yeah. I mean, you know what? Because, yeah, I know. Like, that's like... But I can't pick a lotto number to save my life. Um, but we also, both. Yeah, yes. We I both, went Friday. You went Sunday. Ibsen's Ghost. Charles, Charles Bush and the rest oh, of the company. Uh, unbelievable. Um, Charles Bush, first of all, I remember when I was in college, came out with Vampire Lesbians in, of Sodom. Sodom yeah. And and everyone was going to it. And I'm like, that just sounds like crazy stuff to me. I didn't get it back in the day. But of course, I've evolved, as we all have. <laughs> Charles has not only been a guest on our show, he's brilliant. His book, yeah. Leading Lady, about yes, yeah, everything that now. influenced him and uh -huh. where he came from, you must get. It's it's great. And he just did a short film. I think he wrote that. Um, I can't. Oh my god, I can't think of the name. But look up Charles Bush and and the short film that he just did. Well, his it was the amount of work that he's with done Julie, is Julie Halston. With and, Julie Halston, yeah. but the amount of work that he's done is prolific. And yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not, how do I put this? I'm not a straight play kind of person for the most part, even if it's a farce. I, I do, I'm a musical kind of girl. But I went to Ibsen's Ghost because Charles was the lead and I knew he wrote the play. And I, I'm like, I know this is going to be over the top. Well, it did not disappoint. Yes, right, right. Um, and brilliant. also um, Tom Gibson yes. from... Dharma and Greg from the television show. Yeah. He was he was the love interest. Oh, he was and so was, handsome. Was were you in love with him? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Everyone oh, I was like in Tom. love with He's him. Great. And uh the two women who were in the play were yeah, both absolutely. absolutely brilliant. And um, I got to sit with the director and our dear friend Nathan Johnson, who oh, was, Nathan, who's yeah. been on the show. Yeah. I, I, you know what? All roads lead <laughs> to what these walls could talk. Um, I was not, by the way, apologies. I couldn't make Mindy Franken show and she's been on our show because I had uh, oh, gorilla and chimpanzee yeah. rescue Ooh. gala that night. As you all know, uh, my late husband and I made the film Whispers and mm -hmm. Witnesses Primate Rescue in Cameroon. I'm a member of the Explorers Club and this amazing person, Sherry Speed, who's a veterinarian from Oregon, 25 years ago, decided she was going to take on the poachers in Cameroon. Why? Well, she now has seven chimpanzee families that she has put together Wonderful. in four acre enclosures. They're living their best chimpanzee life. They are not getting, <laughs> they're not getting hunted. And she single-handedly, you know, we have people out there doing the most incredible work, saving elephants, saving rhinos, yeah, gorillas, right. 
chimpanzees and everyone who knows me knows that's what I'm about too. And I like making documentaries on those people, especially the the small organizations that you right. never heard of, exactly. right? Shine a light the on ones them. That are putting their putting uh, right on the front lines. Right. They they are on the uh, the mm -hmm. front lines and they are doing the dangerous work and it mm -hmm. was a gift for me to go there. So, uh I, that's where I was that night. So please, Mindy Fraken, forgive me. She <laughs> what did she write to me on Facebook? Maybe you'll be here the next time. Yes, yes. But I, I just, she didn't mean it that no, way. I wasn't no, like no, 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 not at all. Not, not, at, all. not at all. But um, I went to see uh, Cheryl, a dear friend Cheryl Paley, who's a playwright, yeah. um, went to see her show, Anne and Anna O, um, which is really a remarkable show. It was just the beginning stages, the reading. The uh, and but she's really got something there. It's you really, can, you really can quite, tell, right? Even, yeah. by, even from the yeah. Reader. And then the following day on Monday, oh, Nathan James was in town. I got to see I him. I saw his picture I love with you. Yeah. Love Nathan James. And um, uh, then I went to uh, uh, have a meeting on uh, Little House on the Ferry. Yes. The show that I have been involved with for several years Which is very funny. about taking it off Broadway and it's moving along just nicely. Okay. It's moving along very well. We, well, we love that. We love when our projects move along. Isn't that what it's about? Speaking of so, moving along, before oh, I bring our guest on, I need to tell you all who tune into the show. Um, my husband, Alan Kaplan's memorial will be here at Pangea. It will be a celebration of life. People are welcome to speak. It's Tim singing. You mm -hmm. don't know what you're singing yet. I read, don't. or maybe you do. Good. Or uh, uh, say a poem. Anyway, Pangea is our home mm -hmm. away from home. Alan loved Alan it here. here. His beautiful artwork is in the it's, cabaret right. room. It's in the and, cabaret room. Right. And it's got stickers on it for sale. Um, mm -hmm. Everything's for sale with me. But, um, and that's what, you know what, that's what Alan would want. So it's April 30th and it's at six o'clock. And uh, if you're coming, just let me know so I can add you on the list. And if you want to speak, just let me know that too. Okay, that's all the news. It's Say, yeah, right. I'm exhausted. Jesus, <laughs> we exhaust ourselves on here. Our tip have a lot to remember <laughs> now, but we make one brain. Thank God don't for Google we? Calendar. Okay, so when I was first coming to New York, I had a voice teacher, Dennis Kaiser. I know you're all saying Wendy doesn't sing; she just about carries a tune. This is true, but I was, you know, I didn't even get to this point. And he said to me, "Listen, there's this wonderful show there's uh, that I want you to work on a song from. It's called I'm Getting My Act Together and Taking, Taking it, it on, on the, the road. road.' And today we have from I'm Getting my act together and taking it on the road. The one and only Gretchen Cryer, playwright, lyricist, Yay. performer, director. And here she is with us today. Welcome <laughs> to the show. I am so glad to be here. And oh, Gretchen nice. nominee for the yes, album. Right. You know what? Gonna I could go on and on. I could sing one her one act together yeah, up and down okay. the street. Okay, are we all in there? We want you center stage. Yeah, That's you are center all. stage. There, <laughs> there, there you are. I know everybody, you know, the streaming thing's still so wacky to me the way we're like in front of a computer and we're all yes. squished together and like oh good tim always knows how to angle it gretchen <laughs> thank you so much for um for being here today um i can't believe well i saw you here in old friends when you mm -hmm. did the show here yeah uh -huh. and um i loved it because you are all old friends and i love mm -hmm. the songs that you all sang well the songs were all Cryer and Ford and Shire and Maltby songs. Most of them were. They were. There yeah. were a couple of others. And that was very fitting because right. Richard Maltby and Austin yeah. and I met back at Yale. Oh, wow. Uh, when but I wasn't a, but I wasn't a student there. I was the wife of a guy who was going uh, Yale. to oh, okay. Yale. Who she was going to be a minister? He was in the Yale Divinity School. Oh, at wow. And at that time, Yale did not have women in the undergraduate um, school. I didn't so, realize so that. Odd. So when Sharon Maltby wrote a musical, they didn't have women classmates. So they had to look to the community. Oh, my goodness. And I was the community because I was a wife. Uh huh. Of David Cryer. You were like the he only the... game in town, too. Yeah. Really, they didn't have like that. Talk about you know that's kind of a that's set piece, and the universe really speaking out I because know. the fact that the three of you knew each other from back then, and the chances of I you, know. wow. And even Nancy, I didn't even know that story. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and Nancy Ford, mm -hmm. who all. Nancy Ford and I went to school at DePaul together as undergraduates. Mm -hmm. right. We started writing shows. Then we married. 
both of us married men who were going to be ministers. So, oh, wow. so Nancy and I moved to to Yale territory, to the married dormitories. Yeah. Wow. So they had a married so dormitory. They had a wow. married dormitory. And Nancy Ford and her husband were there. And I was there with my husband. And both Nancy and I auditioned for this show. Oh, my God. That's and classic. Nancy and I both got into it. And I got the lead. Oh. Of the show. But isn't that strange? It's, so we so, really, it's we such have, an incredible story because it's a story that lasted a lifetime. Yeah, no, yeah, a lifetime. yeah. Well, and we're doing Old Friends again on May 2nd. Right. And Nancy is flying in. She's moved back to her hometown, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Uh -huh. she's, she's flying in and she's going to see old friends. She'll be, oh, she'll be here for wonderful. this. That's great. That's at seven o'clock at Pangea, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Um, I have to put it in my calendar. I love the that last is, one. Mm -hmm. And when is that? May, May 2nd. 2nd. May and 2? the backstory, okay. I didn't know the backstory. Well, I just thought the four of you up there were just, you know, old friends from yeah. the business, right? Yeah, we all know yeah. each other, but you, you go yeah. further back than that. Oh, yeah, we do. Wow. The crazy part is then, of course, both Nancy's and my husband's after one year at the Yale Divinity School, <laughs> uh -huh. decided they were not going to be ministers. They were going to go into show business. And wow. Uh, what a <laughs> That's great. What a shift. And that's how we all got to New York. <laughs> then, I mean, I, I thought I was going to be a minister's wife and I was going to put on plays in the church in basement. The, oh, stop. my so goodness. Fabulous. And that's so right. when David said no, he was going to go into show yeah. business, I was just horrified. Wow. And wow! Said, you, which, which horrified you? The show, the no, thought of show business, the lack of church basement, <laughs> or his yes, choice, his career he choice. He was going to go into show business. Wow! And I remember saying, it, "It's going to be the end of our marriage." Well, oh. it was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> but I have always been so grateful to him. I wouldn't have gotten into doing what right. I am doing. Yeah. Right. If it hadn't been for. I was able to ride his coattails into New York City. Right. I wouldn't have ever had the courage to mm -hmm. just decide, okay, I'm going to go into show business and it. I'm going to write shows. Well, I've been writing shows with Nancy. We wrote three yeah. Yeah. before we You all said came when you were 18. 18, we wrote wow. shows. Wow. So, 18, yeah. you, you were yeah. in, wow. How did the two of you meet in the in college? The in, in, in the, the dormitory. dormitory. It was a little small. This college. was in your small college. Yeah, yeah, that is. I actually have heard of that college, but that's like a, DePaul. you know, Gretchen. DePaul or DePaul? DePaul, P -A. DePaul, P -A like Paul, Because I would always in, get those two. Indiana. Yes, right. Uh, DePaul. Yes, and you're originally from Indiana, from right. so Indiana. just outside of of Indianapolis, between Indianapolis right. and Richmond, the total yes. countryside, yes. outside a town of two hundred people. Yeah, Dunry on the old national road. Amazing. That's okay. where, that's where and I yeah, that's Highway 40, High range. which used that's to go right. from coast to coast. That's right. Right. Uh huh. That's right. Yeah, that's where. And I you grew and up. no, you were going to be very comfortable being a minister's wife. Like, yeah. I can, I can, I can. Just... Well, I could again. That would be a very safe, secure, yeah. um, oh, uh, 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 existence. Right. And yeah. then all of a sudden, nope, show business. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> yeah, that's Which is goes from kind of right because you're kind of going from. Um, purity yeah. to debauchery. Right, <laughs> that, that, that's right. Purity, right, it's right. Going yeah. to be the end of our marriages, the debauchery. Yeah. <laughs> How long were you married to him for? Eleven years. Okay, so you lasted eleven years. And I got years. two wonderful kids. Uh -huh. Right. Right. Everything in your life, Gretchen. Just this conversation, so star-crossed. It's it, right from the very beginning. It's really so star crossed mm -hmm. every aspect of it. And the fact that you're still, you know, most of us lose people along the way mm -hmm. for whatever reason, you know, mm -hmm. they don't all pass. They just go on to other things mm -hmm. that your life has been like this from the beginning. Well, yes. And with Richard Maltby and Austin Pendleton, yeah. we mm -hmm. continued working with right. each other yeah. in show business uh -huh. right. all of these years. Right. Uh, Austin has starred in one of Nancy's and my shows. Right. Uh, Richard Maltby directed a whole uh, show at the Manhattan Theater Club that was our songs. Right. Wow. Called Hang On to the Good Times. And then Austin directed a show we wrote, Shelter, which mm -hmm. was on Broadway. And Austin 
Austin, we've written a show about Eleanor Roosevelt, and Austin is going to play Albert Einstein. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, yes. You're right. You, yes. You have to let us know. We saw him in um, Night of uh, the Iguana. Uh -huh. he, he was, I mean, he's fabulous, but he doesn't mm -hmm. even have to speak. You just, like, look he's, at him, he's right? He's just he's, that good of an actor. He, he really thank is. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. And I had to ask him, did you see Night of the Iguana? Did I didn't. Okay, well, uh -huh. there's a whole scene where someone else has a monologue and Austin's in a bedroom and the door is open and you can see it, but there's no dialogue. He's not doing anything. Mm -hmm. He was so funny. I said, I have to ask you this. I'm like, what like is going through your head so that you're mm -hmm. physically present? Cause you're not yeah, and he said he has to listen. Had to listen to every word that the actress was saying, so he didn't fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was right because as a performer, like you know, you're not on and you're behind yeah. a door, but the audience can mm -hmm. still see you. So you have to be yeah. in your character. And you, yeah, and you he, still have to do you yeah. know, small movements or you know. Right, he said he had to yeah. hang on to he's every just, word. He's that, amazing. He's, he's amazing. He's, he's so incredible. So, um, what was it like for you growing up in this like small town? It's such a small population. Did well, you did you come from a big family? What was no, what was growing no. up like? My parents had grown up in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the crash happened, nineteen twenty nine, mm -hmm. and um, they both. My mother did not get to finish. She just got one year of college, and then because yeah, of the, the crash, crash mm -hmm. yeah. and and my dad went to work for his father and became a traveling salesman of school oh, supplies. Wow. Uh -huh. And so um, growing up, he, the reason we ended up outside a town of 200 in Indiana is because my dad decided he, that they should get a house in the middle of his sales territory. Okay. So oh, they, and that was there. also, he could get the highway. And that's the highway. That, that's so, highway, so, right. So he was a traveling salesman, but they laid out the map, closed their eyes <gasps> over the map really? and went, Oh and my that, goodness. And that was Dunreath, you, Indiana. Wow. Yeah, and your that's fate was how, sealed, Fred. <laughs> your fate was sealed. But you see, growing up there, um, I thought that I was going to be a missionary. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> this is wow. one reason that I married a minister. No, no, wow. I got it immediately, yes. right? Because that you all had, makes sense. Right. Yeah. You had your So you grew up, you grew up in a religious family. Well, they weren't that religious. Oh, really? <laughs> but, you, had, you had a missionary calling. I had what, a missionary what was calling. it about being a missionary? It for was you? being of service to people. Uh -huh. That that idea, the town that I went to school in was two miles away. And that was Spiceland, Indiana, and it was a Quaker town. Mm -hmm. And ah. it was and it was very much kids were told that you were to be of service and mm -hmm. you were to be mm -hmm. uh, I look back and probably my education was not very sophisticated at all. But the good thing is that it, it was kind of bred into us yeah. that we were supposed mm -hmm. to be of, of service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I grew up with that. Idea. Uh, in a way, I wish they taught that I, nowadays. I agree with, I agree with Tim <laughs> They taught that. their kids yeah. that, more of that. Right. They, you had a responsibility to society oh, and yeah. that wow. was oh, to yeah. serve. Yeah, yeah. That's well, right. we both come so, from that point of view as well. So, mm -hmm. um, with your studies, did you did you have anything specific you were studying? Well, you did go to college. I went to college. And what did Paul you study University, there? English literature and philosophy. Uh -huh. So I <laughs> well, that's I did really not, useful, useful philosophy. <laughs> and I did not study um, musical theater or mm -hmm. playwriting. Mm -hmm. That's the other crazy thing. Is I mean, it crazy wow. that you wrote your writing? You, at eighteen, yeah. you were writing, but you yeah. didn't study. I hadn't even seen a musical. At the time that Nancy and I wrote the first no musical kidding. at age 18, Nancy had seen two musicals. She was from the big city of Kalamazoo. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, <laughs> and, compared and to so, like where, yeah. yeah. It was a very big city. And so she was very sophisticated and had seen two musicals. I had seen none. Uh, so I don't know. Where, <laughs> who came up with the idea first? Well, we sat down and made a list of what a good musical should have. I <laughs> love this. That's it was so organic. Have, it was supposed to have mystery and intrigue. And, mm -hmm. and so we just, I mean, I didn't know what a musical should have because uh -huh. I had never seen one. But we came up with this list of things that, you know, it should be colorful and and so forth. So it, it, the idea of the first musical was about an 
Eastern European princess whose mm -hmm. country is falling apart. And she comes to the Northwest of America to learn the logging industry. Oh my uh, God. <laughs> and she comes dressed as a man so that she could be a logger and learn the craft of logging so that she could take this back to her Eastern, her failing Eastern. I love Olympian. this, right. I mean, right. talking about writing about things you know. Wait a minute. <laughs> This is like just but so incredible, a logging, us. right? Uh -huh. and, yes. That yeah. our second musical was about the slums of New York. <laughs> which which <laughs> I've never been to. I've never been to. Oh, my God. No. So, so you wrote a you, musical about the slums in New, New York. York. How many yeah, songs sorry. did it have? In? Well, it was a full score. It was a full <laughs> music. I, I uh -huh. so totally yeah, love it. I, right. Just how you organically yeah decide to do musicals which is storytelling yes. with songs in it right. that is a musical that's but what a musical storytelling is. about stuff that we knew nothing, nothing about, about. <laughs> then you know but i love the imagination so I know, imaginative right? So did you put these on? You had you where did you oh, put at, these on? It's a school. The first you did it. two were there. Oh, second wow. two were at Boston University. Get out, because, you did be you with these. Yes, wow. Well, that's because my husband, after he quit to go into show business, went to Boston's uh school of arts. arts yeah, uh -huh. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Dramatic arts. And he directed our third show there at Boston University. How cool is that? Wow. wow. Then we all moved to New York. And then you all moved. How easy I love that. Wow. The two the two uh, couples. Yes, except that Nancy got divorced before uh -huh. we moved. So when we came, my husband was in the army reserve and training and Nancy had just gotten divorced. And so she and I came and mm. rented a, an apartment together. Where, now, where was the apartment? On 74th Street, right between uh, Central Park West and Columbus. Oh, and that that time, what, what Columbus was the rent? Well, we, well, this was when? Okay. The 60s, right? Yeah. Then the 60s. Okay. Uh -huh. What was the Our rent? rent was 130 Ah! <laughs> Central Park West. Do you know what that rent is nowadays? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I can't imagine. Yeah. Same yeah. story then when then my husband got out of the army and mm -hmm. came and we started having kids right away. Actually, I got pregnant with my first child when I got my first Broadway job, which was to be a chorus girl in How Little Me. Oh my goodness. I got pregnant simultaneously oh, no. and worked through seven and a half months. Yeah. Had that baby <laughs> and went right back five weeks later. Back oh my God. Right. You are a true. She probably only had a little baby bump. You no. probably yeah. no. nothing. No, really? You are. Yeah. And the, finally, you know, I. I was able to work through seven and a half months. Wow. And kept holding that baby <laughs> in, holding it in. And as I remember the day after I had left the show, suddenly my stomach went boom. boom. <laughs> and it was I okay to do well, that. Now, which, okay. which child was that this? That was Robin. That was Robin. Uh -huh. And then Johnny was born. 22 months later, yeah. I was oh, in wow. 110 in the shade. I just kept having babies while being a and, and child. Well, that's what course. I was wondering. Yeah. Now, Robin, did she pursue entertainment? She's a because she was she was on yeah. she was on songwriter. stage yeah. before she yeah. was even born. She Both was, of us. She was in, <laughs> right. She was in Little Me. Uh -huh. <laughs> li li yeah. Really, yeah. Little Me, literally. Li literally. <laughs> Yes. And so, uh, yes, she's a great singer and a songwriter, but she has not pursued it professionally. Uh -huh. She's a teacher down in Tennessee. Oh, nice. And, uh -huh. and she she's, a wonderful, yeah, yeah. she's a wonderful teacher. Uh -huh. And she and her husband do perform together down there in Tennessee, mm -hmm. and they write songs together. Her husband is a I fantastic singer, songwriter. Oh, that's great. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. Great. And then Johnny, my son. Yeah. Yeah. John, John, Cryer. John yeah. Cryer. Two, two, yes. and men. two and a half men. Two and a half uh -huh. men. Two and a half men. Yeah. Oh, but he's got quite a oh, list, yeah. extensive yeah. list of television and the, film and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty in Pink was one of his. First oh yes, big right. Oh then. yeah. Ex yeah. Wow. Well, wow. well, you certainly were able to combine your creative life with your family life, but my oh, God, yeah. it had to feel like steamrolling. You know, these chorus jobs. You're pregnant. Yeah. Boom, baby number two Dude, coming yeah, on the yeah. the way. What was your husband doing? Like while all this was, was going on. Uh, well, he came and started starring off Broadway right starring. away mm -hmm. in, wow. in the Fantastics. Oh, how now, wonderful. See, this he, show. When 
he his first show is the Fantastics, and he was earning forty five dollars a, a week mm -hmm. as the lead. Oh, he played El Gallo, and I, a chorus girl on Broadway, was making a hundred and thirty eight dollars oh, a week. Wow! So I was out earning. I was yeah. the power at the chorus, yes. and you were the wow. power, wow. the wow. pregnant power wow. earner. <laughs> Not only was she out doing him salary yeah. while she was preggers. You were producing more than just <laughs> yes, performances. That's really, that's really, that if wow, that is incredible. Um, what was New York like in those days? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the place that we were living was between Central Park West and Columbus, mm -hmm. and at that time, Columbus was a very rough neighborhood. Really, yeah, Central uh -huh. Park West was glorious, uh -huh. right? but Columbus which was 50 yeah. feet away from where right. we were living was the site of west side story that was right that oh, right. Area, yeah. right that yeah. area was yeah what was we're talking like the early 70s now right mid no mid 60s mid 60s, 60s uh -huh. still yeah. and it was really bad um interesting yeah. early 70s it was still bad i came was here it? late 70s mm -hmm. yeah and all those streets in between off of central park mm -hmm. west were drug city okay, you yeah. know they i had were. a huge apartment on amsterdam avenue with it, like seven rooms and with roommates and my mother's like i don't want you living there mm -hmm. i would only wish i had held on to that oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'd be rolling in it now but um you no know? but that's that's so interesting because now 74th and columbus avenue oh, is my, like one of the best neighborhoods yeah. in the city yeah the priciest mm -hmm. and, the uh -huh. absolute priciest well, too after our second child we decided we had to have more room than our little apartment mm -hmm. there on 74th Street. So we moved to 103rd and West End. And that okay. at the time was scary. Yeah, really? It, it yeah. absolutely uh, yeah. was. And yeah. it stayed scary for a good 30, 40 yeah. years. So I went from, you know, one place that was half scary on the border yeah. Yeah. to some place that was really scary. Wow. But it was cheap. Yeah. Right. Eight and, and a half rooms and large. For 100 and Eight and a half rooms for a hundred and sixty-five dollars. Eight and a half rooms for a hundred and sixty-five dollars. And I'm still there today. Oh well, yeah. Well, that was under rent control. Now it's now it no, turned it's, into a co-op. Right. right. But, but you were smart years. enough good, to stay. And, yeah. And, and, and that's a prime neighborhood. And now. isn't that interesting? How I love that over time because I I live in Washington Heights. I've had my apartment yeah. for forty-one yeah. years. Uh -huh. Just and it's it's similar type of experience yeah. where you oh it's it's fabulous yeah. now yeah. but yeah. it wasn't it uh -huh. used to be really yeah. dangerous and really bad so uh -huh. just experiencing that change of yeah. environment or neighborhood around you mm -hmm. yeah that's that's it, it's an interesting experience it's a crazy thing you just yeah. sit in the same place where yeah. you are yeah and the neighborhood just gentrified yeah. all around mm -hmm. now there's no way that i could have afforded <laughs> so, yeah. to, to be yeah. where i am now yeah. uh-huh well no, I, I, that crazy? i'm very happy for you that's thank wonderful. you i know I'm that's, so that's really great <laughs> to, to to hear that so um what is the pet peeve that you have about you have transcended decades in this industry mm. as austin mm. pendleton has yeah. uh we had a soap mm. opera star on the show mm -hmm. also days of our lives transcended mm -hmm. decades what is it what lets you do that right because we all hear about ageism and, mm -hmm. and i completely reject it by the way so does tim i just mm -hmm. won't deal with it and if mm -hmm. anyone is coming at me with that point of view i don't want to hear it how have mm -hmm. how have you been so successful for the amount of time that you've been well creating the work that you've done okay well just up to nancy ford and i just got a, a foothold right away mm -hmm. you did yeah a, in 1967 our, was our first wow. show now is the time for all good men oh and it had a, had a little cult following uh -huh. and yip harburg was a big uh supporter of that show because it was about pacifism it was because my brother was a very Pat, mm, yeah. big fat Pat. pacifist and um uh, so uh that show then kind of we our next show was one that Austin starred in. It was called The Last Sweet Days of Isaac. Mm -hmm. And that Just one happened show. to get rave reviews across the board. And Nancy and I said, 
we will never get such good reviews again. <laughs> and that was true. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, we've never gotten <laughs> raves across the board but, since then. But you have sustained a career this well, time. Yeah, absolutely. Time. I know. And then, then Shelter came after that. And that was the thing that was on Broadway that Austin directed. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, it only lasted for one month. Mm -hmm. uh, and then but I'm getting still, my act you together. wrote a Broadway Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. How wonderful. And then I'm getting my act together, which ended up, I mean, it started out at the public, but, mm -hmm. and it actually did not get, get re good reviews when it opened, mm -hmm. but it evidently was riding the crest of what was happening. It was about I sexual I was going to say, it, right. it struck a chord. Yeah, it, a chord. it was very yeah. timely. The subject yeah. matter was timely for what was going on yeah. in society. And it started selling out, and Joe Papp kept extending it, yeah. extending yeah. it, extending it, and then moved it to the circle in the square, uh -huh. where it ran for three years. Yeah. And then it was done all Internationally over the and, and yeah. all over yeah. the world. Uh -huh. I mean, mm. that's, that's absolutely incredible. But the show that Nancy and I have written now that, which is the sequel to that yeah, called I'm excited still about it. getting my act still yeah. getting my act well the original <laughs> is um i'm, I'm getting, getting my, my act together, together and taking it, it on the road, road. Right. and this one is still getting my act yeah. together same characters 30 years later oh that's and so cool the deal is that the main character the character that i played has decided i mean because they had a tour way back then the, the tour that we saw the first time that she was rehearsing for, where her manager says, this isn't going to sell. It's not commercial because she was breaking the mold of right. the definition of what women should be at mm. that time. And he did not like. He didn't think it was popular. He did no. not think that right. was popular. And was, well, okay, they had a little short run, but it was not a big hit on the road. So they all disbanded. Now she, the character that I played, yeah. has decided, if not now, when, when are yes. we going to do yes. this? Yes. And she gets the group back together. Oh, and says, I love we're gonna, that. We're going to do this. And the manager that she kicked out of her life before because he would not allow her to grow into who right. she mm -hmm. was shows up at their rehearsal. <laughs> I love it. Because he's now a very big deal. He's a manager. Uh, of a major rock group and he's a very very he's very successful now and so he just shows up kind of in the shadows at her afternoon rehearsal for this little job that they're going to do one little gig downtown mm -hmm. right? and uh and she starts thinking you know maybe i made a mistake to kick him out of my life mm -hmm. you know maybe he could help you know and so so it again has to do with their relationship uh -huh. right and um you know, at first he says, well, yeah, sure. I could place a couple of your songs with Celine. I'm meeting with <laughs> Celine. <next laughs> oh, week, uh, like that. And then when this character, the Heather character says, well, you know, she was thinking of going on the road. He said, honey, you know, if you were 30 or 40 years younger, ah, uh, maybe, ah, but, right, but right. Nah, not going on the road. Now. And he keeps making jokes about well, you're going to tour the rest homes. You know, right, and stuff like right. that, the retirement villages and oh stuff. So it's all about aging, about uh -huh. about this is so the, relevant. The character, Gretchen, you know? the character right. Heather right. talks about refusing to collude with the ideas about being an older right. 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 Wonderful. or an older person. Uh -huh. And um, so that's what that show's about. So both of those shows, the two of them are about social situation you know right one had to do with redefining to we, what it was right. to be a, a woman, woman right. in these times redefining right. what it is to be an older person who still has the juice right who still has something they yep. want to do but people are going to say well honey wait a minute if you were 30 years younger or 40 years younger this would work, but it uh, can't. let's talk but about also, that. Let's I talk also, about all the women in that age group now. Yeah. I, I have to tell you, a number yeah. of my girlfriends, I have mm -hmm. girlfriends in their 40s and 50s, but a number of my girlfriends in their 80s, mm -hmm. yeah. well into their 80s, mm -hmm. and cranking it out. Yeah. And mm -hmm. just we have to, as a society, call that out and say, This is happening. Absolutely. This is absolutely happening. I know. And a lot of people are doing second chapters. Well, okay, like the character in, in mm -hmm. uh, Still Getting, still my, getting act my Act Together. Yeah. yeah. Is, is, is there, she wants to go on the road again. She mm -hmm. wants to pick up where they because left. Because she off. can. Because she can. Yeah. Right. But a lot of people do second chapters. Now, like 
right now I work with a lot of people who are putting their solo shows mm -hmm. together. Right. And I was going to, yeah, you do that. Right. Well, I have a, a person who came to me, Judy Rabinar, who is a psychiatrist who works with women on mother daughter issues. Okay. So she came to me as a psychiatrist though, with a story to tell. And we started working on her solo piece, but it turns out it really, is a two-person play, which she has now written, and we are now starting to put it together wow. in my living room, mm -hmm. and we're looking to get I it produced. That. So Judy, who up till this time, and who now is in her 80s, was a psychiatrist right. for 40 or 50 years, yeah, I mean, look at the and background. now is a playwright. Right. And mm -hmm. she has written a really look good at the play. Story wonderful, this woman wonderful. Has, right. Absolutely, the life experience yeah. that she's Thank accumulated. You. Thank you. I mean, and to, and to, she has a lot of creativity there that she can share with the world. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. But it's like she's doing a whole new chapter. Thing. Yeah, she's yes. right. right. And it's an, isn't her. that great? And it's wonderful. And she couldn't have done this before because no. she wasn't at the point. She needs That's to be right. at the point she's at now to, to right. make it happen. I love and, what I love what you're doing, and I love how you're supporting women and if i hear that terminology of a certain age la 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 <laughs> not hearing it yeah. um but, but um one of the things that i really liked in the uh, what is the second um i'm still i'm no, still no, getting no, my act still together still getting my yeah, act together get it, yeah. and still getting my act together that you brought him back Oh, yeah. So, uh, to prove also that a right. leopard does not change its spots. And right. it did not change. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Good point, Tim. Exactly. He right. comes into... Because it can go either way. Road. Either he's either he's learned and grown right. Right. or he's still the same. But he didn't yeah. say still the same. He, he is still the same. Yeah. And he's been... Oh, his, his own marriage collapsed. Uh, the marriage that he, he was dealing with in the first show, uh -huh. that, that one is gone. So he's been mainly dating very young models. Of course. Who are in their of 20s course. and so Oh, uh, absolutely. Course. I wouldn't but, expect anything else. Yeah, but, he's, but he comes in that day. He's just been dumped by a young model mm -hmm. that he thought that this was the real thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, But, but <laughs> here was the thing. I mean, he... he he was going on, he was always being out on the road with his groups and stuff. And she had this, uh, she has now told him that she is getting married to her girlfriend and they are wanting to have a baby oh. and they want to use his sperm. Oh my God, I love it. It's so timely. It so is. He it's into the play it's and so he's timely. having to deal whether or not he's going to send his sperm out because the girl's, girl's girlfriend is ovulating now. And, right. he, and that's what he's, the pressure he's under. Oh right. my God, shows, that's right. Is he gonna send he's a sperm, sperm donor. That's, the way, that's what he's been reduced to in this I version. love this. <laughs> I, I love, love this. Now, um, you also had your, your, your cabaret show here. Oh, yeah. Here, which I would like to talk about. Yeah. But I believe we have, we have a clip. We have a clip. So I would like oh. to take a look. It's not from the cabaret yeah. show. It's not from the cabaret show. It's Lily. Oh, it's the one oh, you wanted to play. Oh, yes. okay. yeah, we, yeah, that was the one oh, you asked Oh, my apologies. Yeah, I no, thought it was not. from the cabaret show. I, but they, I had picked the wrong clip, oh, but I'm glad I checked with Gretchen. because Yes. Go ahead. We do sing this show. So, the song Stop, that you're about we'll to play in show. is in yeah. the cabaret show. Yes. yes. Only okay. Austin and I sing it now instead oh, of just nice. me. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. nice. Well, please um, take a listen Let to Gretchen Pryor. <laughs> Thank you. 
ask you if this life is ever lonely and if he ever feels despair and he says he's learned to love it because that's really all part of it and it helps him feel the good times when they're there yes we sit in a bar and talk There's so much oh. truth in those lyrics. Well, that song, it, it was in I'm Getting My Act Together. It was yeah. in that mm -hmm. show. But it was written before we wrote that show mm. because it was written as a 40th birthday present for wow. my friend Brooks Jones, who was my old, my friend. Um, and so, and Brooks loved that song. And uh, actually, when we were doing the show to begin with at the public, when we were in rehearsal, that song wasn't in the show. Wow. And wow. Joe Papp's assistant at the time was Craig Zaden. And he came and said, you know, that song that I heard you do in the, in, we had sung it in cabaret before you should put that into the song. So we did. But the point is though, that that was based on a real thing because Brooks loved the song so much and the line we'll meet the year we're 62 and travel mm -hmm. the world as old friends do. When he and I turned 62, oh. in the mail, I got a ticket to, it's fabulous. to Nairobi. Oh, my fabulous. God. With a note that says, meet me there yes. on, on December 6th. Oh, my God. And we did. I did. Oh, I flew over Gretchen. there. I met him, and we went on safari. I, I love it. Gretchen, what a perfect thing to so do. Amazing. It's a great story. Yeah. Great so that story. song is a, wow. a real thing. Wow. wow. Oh, my God. What a That's poignant so amazing. moment, too, Absolutely. right? Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. And now um, on piano was Nancy, Nancy Ford. Nancy Ford. Who, mm -hmm. um, again, Nancy Ford and Gretchen Cryer, the team, you have written so it's, much it's, together. They're 18 years old. And, and that again, is like amazing. And again, just having her on the piano and just watching that, the your lifelong friendship, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just, I, I know, that's something to right? really treasure. That's so I wonderful. Know, uh -huh. know. And amazing. so rare. So rare. I uh -huh. know. Now, Nancy and I have both written stuff with other people right. as well. Uh -huh. You right. know, but this collaboration and friendship has lasted amazing yeah. isn't that incredible yeah uh -huh. it really is yeah from that and she's different. coming uh even though oh, she may moved 2nd. back to her hometown uh -huh. she's coming may, may 2nd, 2nd. Nice. Here Pangea. Pangea. and again yeah. tell everybody the show that's oh on it's may called 2nd. old friends at pangea the uh -huh. seven o'clock show yeah. may 2nd uh and it's austin Pendleton, richard maltby 
and Barbara Blyer and me. Right. Uh -huh. Austin and Barbara have kind of a running gig here at Pangea. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we, Richard and I, are really their guests uh -huh. uh, during this old, but we've been doing it now for a <laughs> year. Performed together several times. Did you times. work with Barbara mm -hmm. Mayer Goustone in, in the show? Barbara Mayer Goustone went to DePaul and was a classmate no. of Nancy's yeah, yeah, and yeah, mine. Were, oh yeah. my goodness! You she went that in far peace. back. Yeah, my goodness. Yeah, ma amazing person. Yes, yes she, she was uh, mm -hmm. incredible. She came over to me here. She said, "I don't know you." She said, "But I see you here." Would you like to have dinner one night? The well, fact that oh she, that's gosh. who she was. Yes, yeah. And I'm that person uh -huh. that will say that. Most yeah. people don't do uh -huh. that. I'm like, uh -huh. of course I, I would. Yeah, and right. we sat down uh -huh. there and I met her. And then I went for a voice lesson with her just mm -hmm. to help me style something. And then she was gone three weeks later. I know. I, it's, you I can't know. wrap your head around no, it. You can't. But I love that can't. you had history with her as oh, well. Yeah. We knew yeah. her at DePaul. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. it, it's That's just, amazing. Just yeah. such incredible women. Really. Yes, I agree. I agree. <laughs> now, um, I'm curious. We talked a little before this show about this. You and social media. Oh, yes. <laughs> what or, kind of or ugly lack, or lack thereof? Ugly so, relationship yeah. is, is that? Because I love hearing the other side of the coin, and so does mm -hmm. Tim. Yeah. So well, tell everyone. Okay. Yeah. I just never wanted to do it. I did mm -hmm. not want to do Facebook. I didn't want to way back when that was yeah, like yeah. the first right, time or right. people did. Um, I just didn't want to, mainly because I felt I just didn't have time to right. do it. And it's and time. Then, it's a time and then, suck. <laughs> yeah, and then and then all these other platforms started appearing yeah, right, and right. stuff. And it, it's and I started thinking, well, I know that basically I am invisible in the social media mm -hmm. world, uh -huh. now, which I am. I uh -huh. know that there's not a hint of me any place um, unless I happen to be in a picture with somebody else who's putting their. Yeah, you're right. Our thing. Right. You're all yeah. over right now. Yeah. Even, <laughs> even as we speak, you're right. everywhere. Thanks to my publicist, Jimmy Starr. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Sumatsuki and, even mentioned it yesterday. Right. We were going to yeah. be on this. So show. Uh, and Dorothy Bishop, of course, who we love, um, who uses social media like I'm being Dorothy <laughs> everywhere on social media, and she does it doesn't do the show. The lack, the lack of social yeah. media and the time. It's so time consuming. Yeah. You must have a very good mental health. I do have good mental health. <laughs> good. Yeah. Basically. It, it, no, Tim, it, it affects with, it. It yeah, does. It does. It's, well, you know, it seems to me that, that people start living their lives yes. on the screens and the world that is out there with people either liking them or not liking them yes. or and or making comments about them. That's where the life is taking exactly. place. That is a they're, good point. Wait a minute. Here yeah. we are. Right, right. There. Well, that's I'm why right. we're that's right. why you're here in person. Right. right. But right. their consciousness is right. in there. that is in that that yes. nether world or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And yeah. That. It's like you know, on a different plane. Yeah. Right. And I, I agree. start thinking, I don't think that is good for us mm -hmm. as human beings. I oh my God. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I do the social media and I love yeah. what you're saying. I yeah. feel that so yeah. much. We're asked to audition on Zoom and I think it's uh, awful. What I can know. you tell yeah. from Zoom? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Where we I have don't... to pre record a, a video. Yeah. audition right I know. that we're and framing know. ourselves we're setting but, up our camera yeah. there's no feedback I, from anybody and no, we, we have no idea what the director's yeah. looking for in the character no, right. and none, none of that no, i think yeah. that's horrible it i is. think it's no, horrible I'm, we think it's horrible yes <laughs> horrible. I'm for the here and now being here. Thank, you. thank so, you and again so close enough be, we can hug yeah, I love yeah, that. right. but you know <laughs> what's so wonderful is um your philosophy works for you because you are working and you've continued to work and you continue to create and you're helping people do their solo shows. Yes, I, mean, I am. You, every creative spark in you is being mm -hmm. fed. And I wonder, mm -hmm. and this is for myself included and Tim, the amount of time that we use to promote on right, social media right. because we see we have to yeah but i wonder how much of our creativity is being sucked out Absolutely. of us because Absolutely. i don't do TikTok. there just isn't enough time and there's mm -hmm. so many funny things on there but there's so many people that are not even in this industry 
that right. all of a sudden they're picking up jobs that we oh, would yeah. have. Right. Oh, I know. We right. would have those jobs. Because now, they have a lot of followers. They, because, yeah. right, we're getting down to that follower yes. thing. Their worth. Well, yeah, people's right. worth is right. being right. evaluated as to how many followers right. they have. Yep. And, you know, so... And what's a follower? A follower. Right. <laughs> Somebody who <laughs> looks at you, who yeah. steps through and looks at you. Yeah. Right, and hits like. Now, or... I realize that being invisible has its downside. I mean, because possibly I'm not getting, you know, okay, I have, I have plays that I have written that haven't gotten on yet. I'm writing mm -hmm. a new musical I would, with, right. my, with my granddaughter. I, that's one thing I wanted to right. mention. Yeah. Yeah. Now she... House on Fire. My, yeah, House on Fire. House on Fire, you're writing it with your granddaughter. I it was probably on social that. media. She but is her age. 24. Yeah, of yes, course. Yes, she's totally... That's where she lived right. mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. right. you know? But that's great for you because she's she can that's do the right. web work on that's that. Right. But also what a great experience for her on so many different levels. One mm -hmm. is she gets to work with her grandmother. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. Number two, she gets to work with someone who has this accumulative knowledge mm -hmm. of it and passing that experience on to mm -hmm. her. And I, I think that's, yeah. I just love that you're doing this with her. Well, she is a wonderful singer songwriter, mm -hmm. really, Amazing. really good. Right. And uh, so the way that we happen to collaborate on this show is, um, I had written it's a it's a cautionary fairy tale. <laughs> a <little more> cautionary <laughs> a fairy tale. Yeah, it's a it's a uh, about climate change, and, but it is a fairy tale. It's about a little thirteen year old girl who wants to run away and join Credit Thunberg, and save the planet. But mm -hmm. her dad is the head of the biggest oil industry. Oh, in the world. I love this. Now, one of the big characters is Mother Earth. Mother Earth is a dominatrix. And, oh. man, and the father of the little girl, the captain of industry, the captain of industry mm -hmm. goes to the dominatrix all the time because he just loves to be punished. And she mm -hmm. sends, she sends tornadoes. She sends wildfires. Oh, that's sends, so funny. She, and he this will not, great. he will not say the safe word. Now, meanwhile, uh, the little, the, uh, oh, the, the safe word is blueberry muffin. <laughs> He will not That's say the it. for it. He won't he, say he it. Because right. his grandma, he loved his grandma. His grandma always made him blueberry muffins. Right. Muffin. So he can't oh, say the word. Oh, my this is cannot. brilliant. Yeah. But anyway, the little girl, though, has become a supporter of friends of the last two northern white rhinoceroses on Earth. Of course. They're in, Ken they're in Kenya. Yeah, Najin and Fatu. Did you, you get to see? Them. Of course, I know all about them. Did you, you get do. to see them when you went there on safari? I do, I'm having a feeling that maybe I did see the male who just died yeah, in 2000. He, passed, yeah. he, was, he was gone. His name was. I, I can't remember his name. name. I know I'll, the story. I'll think of it, yeah. Right. But anyway, the little girl is trying to figure out a way to save the, the last two. It's a mother and daughter, mm -hmm. Najin oh, and Batu. And uh, she runs away from home. She goes to. A homeless children's shelter where all the kids are wow. homeless from climate change. Oh, They're you have every dozen. element in here, boy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and what? And they have been tasked by Mother Earth to take care of Katerina Condor, California Condor, the California Condor, condors, because oh. they almost yeah. were uh, extinct, extinct yeah. in the eighties. They were down to twenty-eight of them. Wow. Now they have started reproducing asexually, the virgin birth. Interesting. So. <laughs> So at the children's shelter, um, Katerina is being guarded because she is now pregnant with another egg. They only lay an egg every two yeah. years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a long so, gestation. So they're, keep, they're keeping it, uh, her safe. The children are keeping her safe. She births an egg right on stage, sings a song called I Believe in Miracles, because it was oh, a virgin birth. Gosh, it was I a virgin birth. Right. But our little girl gets the idea maybe Katerina Condor could teach Fatu how to have a virgin birth and save the thing. So the right. end of the and first save act the white is rhino. Save the white yes. rhino. So the end of the first act is they are all flying on the back of Katerina Condor to <gasps> Kenya to oh, try to save Fatu I love by it. teaching it's beautiful. her. Beautiful. Oh my god. Anyway, so that's the show. The reason that I'm Incredible. that I'm collaborating with Gracie, my Gracie uh -huh. Highland, who is my granddaughter, she wrote a song called Early Teenage Crisis, mm. which when I heard wow. it, I said, that is perfect 
for my show for the little girl to sing. It's it's a young girl singing yeah. about she's having an early teenage crisis wow. about what's going on in the world. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I said, Gracie, could we use your song in right. the show? And she said, yes. And then she wrote an, another one for wow. the kids. Oh my goodness. And, then, and then we collaborated on a few things, but even that one song, Early Teenage Crisis, which is just so perfect for the show is, and it was a perfect expression of her, Right. you know, she's this young uh -huh. person. Um, Anyway, so that's how our collaboration came oh, about. God, but I, I love, love the generations, yes. her, her, her perception yes. to your perception. Yeah. And uh -huh. now, once again, that collaboration. Yeah. Well, right. and again, like you have done all along, it's synchronistic. Right. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. just Absolutely. kind of organically happens. Yeah. That's how mm -hmm. your entire career seems yep. to have moved, is just yeah. organically yeah. just well, moving she, along and being placed in situations that work out. I know. Seemed well, to work out. my granddaughter, Gracie, came to live with me almost two years ago, a year and a half ago, moved in with me. Uh -huh. and that's and then I heard her song uh -huh. and, decided, and, right. and decided, well, we should collaborate. Uh -huh. Now, she's mainly a singer songwriter. Uh -huh. Actually, she performed here at Pangea. Oh, she's oh, been, my oh yeah, night. we have to see her. Yeah, uh, she yeah. was with that group Girl Dinner. The, oh, I remember when they were here. I uh -huh. didn't get to okay. see it. So that's who she is. She, I love it. it. <laughs> yeah. She's a wonderful singer-songwriter. <laughs> I mean, what she didn't set out to write musicals because she's mainly a songwriter, but it just mm -hmm. so happened that the stuff that she wrote was perfect to go into the show. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I just I wanted to touch on a couple of things because firstly, the your um the acknowledgments and the accolades that you have received. Yeah. I would like to at least touch so, on that because they're so right. deserving. So oh, deserving. Okay. Like um, I have like the last sweet days of Isaac um, got an Obie Award, uh, Best Musical Drama Desk Award, mm -hmm. Outer Critics Circle Award. Mm -hmm. um, Shelter got the Golden Theater, mm -hmm. Hang Hang On to the Good Times, Manhattan Theater Club, Eleanor Williamstown Workshop, the mm -hmm. American Girls Review, and American Girls Fund. My God, you've really hit yeah. everywhere. Um, Anne of Green Gables, that yeah. one I actually remember I because I mm -hmm. read the whole series. I loved yeah. Anne of Green Gables. Theater Works. And then, mm -hmm. of course, uh, Laguna Playhouse. I'm For getting yes. my act uh -huh. together, mm -hmm. which, which is... Which By the really... way, the American Girl thing, we wrote two shows for uh, the American Girl Company. Yeah. Because, and they built theaters in American Girl Place in Chicago for, and New York and LA oh. for our shows. And uh, then when the company was sold to Mattel, Mattel shut down the theaters because they mm. could make more money putting product in there than uh, right. Uh, but uh -huh. anyway, so they than art. Than art. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Mattel's tagline. That's not right. capitalism. <laughs> but the right. wonderful thing is those American Girl shows, which were like 25 years ago, uh, ran well in Chicago for 10 years. The kids love and, them. And in New York, it ran before they shut the theaters down. Seven years, L.A four years, those girls are having a reunion on the 21st oh. at 54 Below. Oh, I love, I love that. That. Is that. The girls who were in the shows, and there were, by the time the shows closed, there had been hundreds of them because uh -huh. there were eight girls in every show, uh, and they would sometimes do five shows a day at wow. American yeah. Girl Place. So they had to have five different the cast, cast yeah. Uh -huh. So that's 40 girls right there. Yeah, right. And then they, the actors had to turn over. As soon as they started growing breasts, they, because they, the, uh, they were all supposed to be 10 years old. Right. Uh -huh. So anyway, they accumulated hundreds of girls who have oh. been in those shows. Who are mothers uh -huh. now themselves. Who are 35 years old. Oh, now. how yeah. wonderful. And they're going to be doing this thing. Uh, oh, very cool. Next how week. Uh, at 54 Below, and they're going to be singing songs that they sang when they were 10 oh, years old. Oh, girls oh, so I love that. Again, the endurance and the long lasting, yeah. and just again, that those times meant so much to those girls. Just, that's what they're yeah. going to yeah. really talk about before that, they sing how their you've songs. affected yeah. these lives. Yeah. That's so beautiful. It's yeah. so wonderful. It is wonderful. 
Mm-hmm. You know, that had to be now, a, a great affecting for other you, people's lives. Yeah. You, know, you also teach the workshop. Oh yeah, yeah. my the solo creating workshop. your own solo workshop or performance. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. Yes, and I I teach work. I have a workshop actually that's starting on Thursday, uh, and the workshop goes on for six weeks. And at the end of that time, everybody's got enough of a little chunk of something that we do a showcase. Maybe mm-hmm. they only do ten minutes worth. Or, so then like when that. is that story? I would be totally interested Thursday. in this. Would you? Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, it's this, this Thursday. This but Thursday. Right. When is the next six weeks from now you're going to do another one? Well, depends on if I have people. Okay. So I'm it. on your next batch. Because okay. once it goes mm-hmm. on, it's every Thursday. I can do yeah. Thursdays. Mm-hmm. I can't now. because. Yeah. But yes, I would totally love to do that. Oh, okay. okay. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got people in all walks of life because everybody's yeah. got stories. Oh, everybody's absolutely. Got stories. I've had farmers from Utah. I've had, <laughs> I've, I love I've it. had doulas. I have people who are cancer nerve nurses. Wow. I've had, and then These a are lot great of stories. Actors. Yeah. yeah, I've got one guy right now, a guy named Jimmy Georgiades. He has just finished his piece, and we're doing living room presentations. Oh, by the way, I should invite I you guys that. to come to the living room when and it, see. Oh, Rona. I would love that. We would yeah, do that. The next one would... might be on the thirtieth. Uh huh. Oh, the thirtieth. That's my April thirtieth. Yeah, that's Alan's that's memorial. That's my Alan's memorial oh, here. Right. Yeah, oh, but I I will get but, you yeah, on one of I these. Mean, I'd the, like to the take one the workshop. That, I would love to. Yeah. Okay. Sure. His piece is really wonderful, and he's found a backer, oh, uh, a guy who he's known since college, a guy who has done really well in business, uh-huh. and just said to Jimmy, "Well, I'll back your show." How wonderful! And, and, and so. We're doing it. We're yes, doing it. We're yes, producing I love it. it next fall. So we um do we sign up so that we stay in touch with you because we're we're do on board. Up. Okay, mm-hmm. it's it's on your website. No, you no, don't go to your website. How we just <laughs> say it's I <laughs> should put we'll send it on an my email, website. but it's okay. Yeah, send me an email. Send you an email. I, I do deal with email. She does. Okay. <laughs> that is the one I'm witness. I, I'm total I witness to the emails and texts. And texts. Uh-huh. Text. Oh, Perfect. and and my God, look at all these people we We've have got on some, here. Yeah, some yeah. comments. People that were watching. Okay. Our friend Suze Gennaro designer. from uh, she's a fashion designer says hello from uh, from Massachusetts. Hi, Suze. And, and um, Joe Preston, Preston, our good friend Joe Preston. He's kind of a historian here uh-huh. in the East Village. Mm-hmm. Um, he says, "I okay, he I can, can help." help with- with the slums of New York. He can, when we were talking about oh. the slums of New York, <laughs> he, uh, runs, says he can help with that. He runs yeah. with the Jackie Curtis estate, yeah, is from, his uh, cousin, um, and his family, Andy Warhol his, and, his family is an old New York family. His grandmother was Slugger Ann, who ran oh, right on the corner here. Yeah, yeah, it's not Slugger Ann's yeah. anymore, but the bar uh-huh. is still there. Uh-huh. Our friend Michael Louisi, hi. hi. And Rose Trentman. Okay. She was the first female... Head of commissioner boxing, commissioner of for boxing, women's boxing. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, right. And she's no bigger than a minute. She's oh, a she's sheer just of mine. Yeah, I love her to death. And um, Joe Preston also says, um, "What a set of pipes!" I know. Oh, on your song when you were singing, oh, you know, well, for nice. someone that was yes. just going to be the minister's wife, that's a hell of yeah, a voice right? in there. That was that just in there? That just um, yeah, that's Jesus, just, yeah. my God. Uh, Gladiola Gladrags, a friend of ours, she's a drag queen. Mm-hmm. Says, "Love this, thank you." uh let me see prince so, fleet easton yes hello tim i'm aunt lucy he calls palm me that springs. from palm springs there was a commercial i had signed my soul oh, away nice. and somebody used my picture in a commercial and mm-hmm. he saw it out in palm springs and i'm like i never gave the ability to do yeah, that um, well you know when you sign things for stock photography you should read it. i yeah, should have read it right because the ad agency <laughs> got back to me in two seconds and said mm-hmm. oh yes you did mm-hmm. so um and prince fleet easton has won so many awards yes he's a wonderful performer but he also does tons of charity yes and well, Sue's uh, general also says hello great show thank you so much thank you so much gretchen you are oh, fabulous you are so such, um so i have to make a note <laughs> i've got to be here may 2nd, may 2nd and i think i can do that and then i have to get um remind you i do want to do your next batch of solo shows okay and i would like to attend the living room right and i'd like yeah, to do the living that. room you will, uh-huh. it's wonderful uh-huh i'm so proud of his show well i'm proud of all the people that i work with mm-hmm. are just one because we often start with the blank page right people who just wanted 
think they've got something they want to uh -huh. do, but they don't even quite know what their story is. But right. we find it. We right. find their story. And everybody's right. got a Everyone's story. Got a story. Uh, everybody right. has a story. I actually have a book. It's called mm. She's the Last Model Standing. It's about my entire life mm. from coming to New York in the late 60s mm -hmm. and being yeah. a Studio 54 uh -huh. person. But uh -huh. I have wanted to make that into a show. Yeah. Okay. And, and there's a million elements in there. And I am a storyteller. Mm -hmm. So the minute you said I would, I'm totally interested. Okay. I'd like mm -hmm. to be on board for yeah, that. Yeah, I think okay. that would be a good yeah. combination, yeah. a good collaboration. Yeah. And I have a cabaret show. He Tim already you has do? a wonderful yes. show. Yeah, yeah. Oh I'm God. mostly a singer myself. Yeah. Uh -huh. but, but the I have a story cabaret. in his show is quite the story. Yeah, I take the, the first half of my life. Most of my friends, they have no idea. What, right, you know, I had what no, I had and, no idea. Yeah, I had, I had developed a pretty extra, an extreme drug and alcohol addiction that by mm -hmm. all accounts should have killed me oh and i God. take the audience down into it and then down oh. to the point of death and then back up and for then, a big fun and obviously we had a turnaround point oh yeah uh -huh. right that's yep. important yeah yeah People right know that but yeah i i'm just things around i'm know? just a wet rag at the end by the end of that and so is your audience yeah, i was right, like oh, oh god i'm so emotionally <laughs> do you do it here i yeah, have done it here actually yeah, yeah, yeah. i did do it at png at one then time then you've yeah. got to tell me when oh okay right. well yeah. maybe i will do it yeah we're due for another one with you i told okay. you that because when i met you i had no idea about your show or anything and uh -huh, the first time right. i ever saw it was here and i was like oh my god what a life you know <laughs> But it's yeah, it's about time for that. But we could revisit okay. definitely. Well, we had such a great time today. Gretchen, with you. Gretchen, thank, thank you. you so very much, very Gretchen well. Pryor. You are a remarkable human being. Yes, a remarkable creative. And just to thank you for your contribution for all you've yeah. done. Oh, and, for and, 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 and you can continue, continue yes. to do. Yes, absolutely. Because we need you. Yes, I know. <laughs> we gotta we gotta Let's, stay in there. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Gretchen Cryer, thank you very much. Okay. And thank you very much thank for Thank you, everybody. In. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> bye bye. bye. <laughs>